Good morning, Columbus, and welcome to another segment of The Daily Double. I'm your host, Cliff Nicholson, and on The Daily Double, we discuss everything dealing with education. Joining us in our studio today is a very special guest. Dr. Eva Cooper is a lead statistician for the International Center for Leadership and Education, and she's also an author of a well-known book, which on the New York Times bestseller has been number one for the last couple of weeks. It's called Statistics for Dummies. Um, Dr. Cooper, we are so pleased that you decided to join us in our studio today. Well, I am happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Let's get right to it. Many of us are intimidated by statistics, either intimidated or we're bored. I remember my last statistics class, I opened a book and it seems like everything was Greek. All these Greek letters, formulas, and the, the common, the everyday person doesn't feel like statistics is applicable to their lives. But something tells me that you are going to disagree. I am going to disagree, Cliff. Um, actually, statistics, believe it or not, is very exciting to me. But I can understand why people are apprehensive or even bored by the topic of statistics. But I'd just like to talk to you first a little bit about how statistics is involved in our everyday life. If you think about it, when you go to the gas station and you see those prices on the gas pump, actually statistics is involved in trying to speculate or determine what the gas prices are going to be based on oil, et cetera. Um, if you think about market prices, um, stockbrokers are constantly using statistics to try to determine what the market is going to do. And probably something that resonates with most people is, if you think about it, actually, um, we saw the debate last night, the vice presidential debate. We had the presidential debate, I think, a, a week or two ago. And pollsters actually use statistics and are at this very moment now determining or trying to determine who might win the presidential election. It's very true. As you mentioned, after the debate last night, there are polls out this morning that showed different numbers than before the uh, vice presidential debate. But tell our audience what, what concept you plan to share with us today. Well, actually, I'm going to talk about the dependent t-test. And the dependent t-test, actually, if you think about it, trying to make this in simplistic terms, is basically where you are trying to determine what a null hypothesis, if you can prove or disprove a null hypothesis. And a null hypothesis basically says, all right, there's no difference in the means between these two related groups. There's not going to be any difference, um, basically. Um, so if you can prove that there is a significant difference, that's what we call an alternative hypothesis. Wow, I thought this was going to be easy. Okay, so let me, um, you know that on the Daily Double, a large percentage of our viewership happen to be teachers. And when they tune in, they like to take snippets of information that can directly translate back into their classrooms. So if you would, just kind of frame this whole concept around an example of uh, something in education, something that would apply to teachers. Well, you're right. Teachers are always trying to determine what to do as far as motivating their students, getting the best results out of their students. And so oftentimes they're trying to wonder simple things like, well, is it easier to test my students in the morning or in the afternoon? Will the results be different? So basically when we talk about using statistics with, say, where teachers are involved, we can take a related group Group, which might be the same group of students and what we might do is we might give them an exam in the morning give them exams in the afternoon and then try to determine through the dependent t-test were the results any different was there a significant difference in those scores now I want to get back to the scores in a minute but you said something and it just jogged my memory I heard you say dependent t-test and I remember from my college years many years ago uh, the independent t-test. Is there any similarity between these two? Well, if you think about it this way, the dependent t-test, if you'll remember, I said a related group, so you've got the same group. In an independent t-test, you've got different groups. So the group is not the same group, and that's why we call it the independent t-test. So let me see if I get this right. If I have two groups, uh, one group of students, correct? Just one group? Okay. And I give them a test in the morning and I record their average. I give another test in the afternoon and record that average. I would need a dependent t-test to see which time was best? Well, yes, short answer is yes, but 
again, I don't want to complicate it, but with statistics and the dependent t-test, there are certain assumptions that have to be met. And if you think about it, think of it this way, as if you pulled out names out of a hat. You have to randomly choose your samples. Um, there are also a couple of other things. You have to choose that population from what we call a normally, normally distributed population. And also, the population variance has to be equal. So help us understand, because I know my audience is probably having a difficult time with this. If my students test in the morning and their average is 80, and those same students test in the afternoon and the average is 85, why do I need a dependent t-test to tell me which time is best to test my students? Wouldn't the average 85 tell me that the afternoon period is more uh, conducive to testing? Well, actually, Cliff, that's a very good question. But think of it this way. Um, there may be some things that um, you basically are due to chance, that just by chance those scores were different. So basically what the dependent t-test does is it helps you determine, was it the intervention? And in the example of the morning and the afternoon, the intervention is, is the time. What time did you give those exams? It's starting to make sense to me now, OK? But I want to run through a few examples just to see if I really have an understanding of this dependent t-test. If I have one group of students and I want to see if a tutorial program works and I test them on Monday as a pretest, right. I use my tutorial program from Monday through Friday and then I give a post-test. Is that scenario a candidate for the dependent t-test? Absolutely, the dependent t-test. Okay, how about this one? What if I have a writing program? and I give my students a writing pretest. The writing program lasts uh, four to five months. And then I give a post-test. Am I still a candidate for a dependent t-test? Cliff, I am so impressed with you. I think you actually love statistics. <laughs> actually, you would. Very good. You would use All right, the dependent t-test. Let's try one more example for teachers out there who like to test over time. Some teachers like to give a pretest. They do a midterm or a benchmark and then they do a post test so now you have the same group but instead of being tested twice now you have three periods do i still use a dependent t test i know what you'd like the answer to be however uh, and this would probably have to be covered in another show but that's actually we'd have to use analysis of variance for that analysis of what analysis of variance i know it sounds complicated but believe okay. me i could explain it okay. in easy terms well, my producer's telling me that we have about 30 seconds left, so I want to give you the last word. I want you, as concisely as you can, to tell our teachers under what conditions would their scenario be appropriate for a dependent t-test. You have about 15, 20 seconds. Go. Okay. Using the example that we talked about earlier, for example, think about that teacher who wants to determine would the scores be better in the morning or the afternoon. I want the best out of my students. So what I can do is I can use the dependent t-test as long as I'm using the same group and I'm testing those at them at different times and I meet those assumptions, then I'm good to go with the dependent t-test. You've been awesome. Well, thank you. Do you promise to come back and do a segment on analysis of variance? I certainly will. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Cooper, for joining us again in studio. As always, I'm your host, Cliff Nicholson. Thank you for tuning in to The Daily Double. As always, have a great day, Columbus.